It's like advertising, but free. <laughs> How to write a press release that gets results. Um, obviously, it's not free because your time is money. But for the purpose of this headline, it just worked too good. So I'm leaving it there. It lives there now. Fight me. Kia ora, I am Calliope. I'm currently working at Guild as a production lead and wordsmith. Previously, I was the creative producer at indie game studio Starcult. And there I worked on a bunch of things like production, marketing, design, direct now sound team, 3D art occasionally, and more. Before that, I was a producer at a local creative agency called Wrestler, working on VR. And before games, I worked at an award-winning public relations agency called Right Communications. They've won mid-sized PR agency of the year many times running, and I'm very proud of being part of their journey. I started at Right as an assistant before working my way up to being more on deck with our accounts which means that I have done a lot of media monitoring, like physically thumbing through newspapers as well. I've done a lot of strategizing and between games and traditional PR, I have looked at thousands of press releases and I've drafted quite a few as well. And one thing that I've noticed in games is that we often suffer from press releases that either aren't professional enough or just aren't interesting enough. And we work in a very interesting industry. We're in entertainment. We're pretty interesting, so let's change that. So today I really want to cover agencies, the, the good and the bad, um, how to structure a press release, how to deliver a press release to ensure that people actually pay attention, and then tools to help you write and deliver these too. My first opportunity to write a press release for a game was for BFF. We had limited resources and our launch was pretty rough for many, many, many reasons. Um, external and internal. <laughs> In spite of this, we were covered by Kotaku, we were covered by PC Gamer and even Forbes um, and lots and lots of other outlets which was amazing for us. We had really high coverage considering the size of our team. I believe that this is because we had some serious strategy behind our announcements and our launch that helped us immensely. We also had a PR agency, Pop Agenda, um, who helped us get the word out and were fantastic to work with, can't rate them highly enough but we still did write our own press releases. Now, why would you bother to learn this stuff when you can just hand it off to the experts? Great point, so glad you asked. Um, PR agencies are great. As I just said, I was in one and I'm really proud of the work that we did. However, I if you think about the best community managers and communicators that you know, um, the ones that represent specific games and brands, their voice is really unique. They know their games inside and out. They know the writing style of the game. They know the design really well. And best of all, they actually know what will resonate with their game's audience. When writing a press release, you really need to harness that unique voice that makes your brand and your game special. And this is why I advocate for devs to write their own press releases, even if it's just a draft and even if you're working with a third party PR agency. A PR agency's version of your game might not hit that like special source, <laughs> that voice, um, and they might not be as in touch as you are with your audience to know what to highlight. You know your audience and you know your game. So use it. So what they can do for you. Um, in my opinion, PR agencies are fantastic for advice on strategy, for helping you tidy up your drafts and formatting, and of course for all their wonderful connections. Obviously this is good PR agencies. There are plenty of not great PR agencies out there, um, so do a lot of digging before you team up with one. A good PR agency will have their email addresses for your favorite journalists and your favorite influencers, and they'll be able to sell your press release to a much wider range of people that you hadn't heard of too. They can also suss your media monitoring, which is a laborious task if you don't have fancy tools, so that's great. And at the end of your campaign, you'll have a nicely delivered and lovely formatted report where you can see every single piece of coverage that you got and who did it and what outlet. However, as we just discussed, there are a bunch of things that they might that are unique to you that they just might not hit on the head. Um, they won't have the same connection to it. So. Things like your game and studio's tone, your values, and anything specific that your audience might value, which is a little bit niche, they might not have the same connection to. So, just in case we forgot, what's a press release? <laughs> so, a press release is a written, formalish conveyance of news. That's the main gist of it. We want people to either write about or take notice of something that we're doing. 
So we write a really cleverly formatted announcement to ensure that everyone understands our news and that those who are interested take action on our news. Because it's a carrot, like we're dangling a carrot, we need this to be as enticing as possible. We need to be pulling out all the stops to make people pay attention to us. And let's learn how to write one. I, I do promise, like I stand by that. It's not as difficult as you think. So, know your angle. So there's a few there's a few things that I could mean when I say know your angle. So I just want to say that this is a talk specific to press releases. We're not going to go into how to manage your entire PR strategy. Um, a, because it's already been done quite well in my opinion, um, in a few GDC talks, but also because we'd be here a lot longer than 45 minutes. Um, actually, Thomas Reisinger's talk on strategy is one of the talks that I'd really highly recommend. It's a little bit dated, uh, 2016, so a wee while ago, but the core concepts are very on point, even if some of the stats are a little bit old. My main goal here is to give you the tools to enact a part of your strategy, not to tell you how to build your entire map, right? In this sense, we're looking at a microcosmic view of this topic. We're not looking at the entire macrocosm of PR and how that works for you and your game. By angle, I mean what is the angle of your game? What's the reputation of your studio? What's your elevator pitch? What's your unique selling point? What are you trying to convey and how would you like that to come across? And of course, what kind of specific news speech are you using to try and communicate? For games, um, it's often one of these. So we have company launch or announcement, interesting hires or studio news, um, any kind of acquisitions, stuff like that. Uh, a game announcement, like straight up announcing the game for the first time. Trailers, announcement and gameplay, uh, release date announcements, release announcement and your launch trailer. All of these are really great news beats that you can use. So, structure. Focused on the most important to the least important. This is not your high school essay. <laughs> I, I tend to find that a lot of beginners or, or people who just aren't as familiar with this kind of um, writing style, or they're really good creative writers when they were in high school, um, they think that they need a nice intro to begin the press release before they get into the meat of the content. This is not how we write press releases. Press releases are top heavy. That means they have all of their information condensed at the top and then descriptive and less important information towards the bottom. So you are filtering, you are filtering your content as you go by most crucial to least crucial. So structurally, a press release will look a bit like this. We'll have our lead, which is our most important information, the five W's, which we'll talk about shortly. We've got our next paragraph, which repeats the lead with more context and info. Um, we've got our next paragraphs, <laughs> which carry the least crucial elements of the people for the people who've reached that point, for the people who really want to know the entire story and the context around this announcement. And then we have all your links and boilerplates. This will be almost impossible to see, but we're just looking at the format. We're not looking at the actual words, really. So I apologize for the amount of words on this slide. Um, so here we have a really good headline. Uh, we've got Sega and Nintendo join forces for Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. That's already a big deal. Very interesting. Wow. Um, and we also have a really good subtitle, which is legendary icons appear together for the first time in video game history. Again. Very important, very impressive. Wow, I'm so interested. That sounded really sarcastic. I am genuinely interested about this. <laughs> um, so then we have our lead here as well. So we've got correct formatting of the dateline, which shows us the, the date and the place. Um, so Tokyo, March 28, 20, 2007. Um, a good lead is uh, that is long enough to tell us all the critical information in a really engaging way. There's a lot of TMs in there. We've got a second paragraph that has more info to support the lead, um, but same topic. And then the third is honing a little bit more in on the details. So if you're writing this yourself, a pull quote or a call to action could work nicely here too. And while you can't see it on the screen because I wanted to actually kind of show you what this would structurally look like on a page, um, you would include your boilerplate contact and all your links below this as well. I've included a really good resource at the bottom here to refer to. Um, Indie Game Girl has a, not exactly a template, but has like a really good like breakdown of, of how you would write this press release or like the structure of this press release as well. Um, and I would highly recommend checking it out. If you're writing yours, it will help you structure and kind of give you something to keep referring to. Headlines. <laughs> 
oh, headlines suck. Um, headlines, titles, game names, they, they all suck to come up with and write. I find them incredibly difficult. Um, headlines and leads for me are the most difficult part of writing anything. <laughs> Even coming up with the title for this talk was hard. But there's some good rules of thumb that you can try and stick to. You want to keep it under 18 words. You want to try and stick to the facts. Well, not try. You want to stick to the facts and you want to get some emotional words in there too, if possible. There's also a multitude of tools online that you can use. So CoSchedule has a free one, which is the one that's in uh, in the slide. So clearly, hey, is this a good headline? Is a pretty average headline um, coming in with a score of 61 for the headline score and an SEO of only 44. Ouch. Um, but CoSchedule's tool will also tell you what type of headline you have. Uh, what kind of sentiment that you're communicating? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it informative? Etc. Uh, and it will also give you tips for better structuring and words to use. It's super helpful if you have a writer's block. So in the word balance, any of those words that you can click on has a nut, like other options that will open up that will also communicate like negative. It's like a thesaurus with sentiment analysis attached. Um, and then when you use it all together, it gives you a rough score. It's, it's just super helpful. <laughs> leads or leads. It's spelt funny because it originates from mid 20th century journalism where it was used to differentiate between the lead of the printing presses to the lead of a news tip. I like funny spellings in general, so I use the first version. So now we know that your lead is your most crucial paragraph of your entire press release. If you think about a news article that you've seen uh, or, or something that you clicked on recently, how often do you read the first paragraph or two in an article and then click out? I attended a press release writing workshop actually in Auckland a while ago, it would have been 2016, um, where the experts said that on average you get one and a half scrolls on a phone, so mobile, before people click out of articles. So if you translate that to how much text you can have on a screen, you're generally looking at your lead and maybe a little bit of the next paragraph being written. So you want to bear this in mind. If if you had to choose what information to give someone, if the only thing that they're going to read is that first sentence, what would you write? When you're writing a lead, you also want to use a direct lead um, with emotional and evocative words. So just quickly, there's a difference between like a creative lead and a um, summary or direct lead. So a summary or direct lead is what we generally see in news. Um, or well, when we're writing press releases. A creative lead might be something uh, that you see in like a longer investigative piece where there's a, um, it was a sunny day in Florida. You know, like it could open like that, which doesn't tell us anything, but there might be some following information that piques our interest. That's a creative lead. That's engaging us without actually telling us much. So... With our direct leads, we want to include the, we want to address at least the five W's. So we want to at least cover the who, what, when, where, and why. Um, you can add a how for extra extra spice, but I would generally say that it's not necessary. Although you might want to include that in your next couple of paragraphs. It depends. It depends if it's relevant. So even though you're focusing on getting your most critical pieces of information in this paragraph, your five W's, you also want to think about your tone. You don't want this to be stilted or lead or really boring to read. You want to match the tone to your audience, who presumably are the people that you want to play your game. So you want to make sure that your tone matches whoever you're pitching this to. In our case, we're usually going to go for games media, but remember that the language that you use in your press release is going to be probably different if you send it to an entertainment uh, outlet, such as, I don't know, like Kotaku or something, or if you were sending it to an academic site, like different different types of people who are going to read this. <laughs> While you're thinking about tone as well, if your game is lighthearted and fun, you can use lots of exclamation points and lots of really warm language. If you're announcing a horror game, you can use evocative scary language in your lead, vaguely threatening, it's totally acceptable as long as it's thematic. Here are some quick examples that I wrote. Um, we're going to start with the left, which is the bad example, and go to the right, which is the good example. Both of these include the same information, um, just placed and structured differently. So let's take a look. 
A Melbourne-based indie studio called Dogs or Us, it's already we're using too many words, announces a game about training dogs that will come out on a Nintendo Switch and PC later this year called Dogs Are Good. That's not an easy sentence to read. Don't write like that. You want to read your lead over and over and over and over again. The game is sure to be a hit. No, it's not. Because of its nice art style, nice means nothing to me, and interesting mechanics. I, you can't tell me what's interesting to me. I need to decide whether this is interesting to me or not. Um, of petting, feeding, and caring for your dog. It also has great writing. That's not a good descriptive word. Um, and tells the story of a new dog owner trying to learn how to care for dogs. We're using the word dog a lot. The game also includes facts about dog training. Nice, but irrelevant. Okay, so this is a poor example because it uses too many words to say way too little. It's not easy to read um, and it feels really stilted. So as I mentioned before, you really want to read your lead out to yourself or other people over and over and over again and make sure that you don't trip up on certain things or that um, the flow is, is, you know, you want to make sure that the flow is really nice and smooth and, and that no one's going to kind of get halfway through a sentence and then be like, oh wait, I, I've misunderstood and have to go back to the beginning. It also doesn't use any emotional or evocative words that actually help us to understand what experience we can look forward to with this game. Using words like nice and, and great doesn't tell us anything about what this game will feel like to play. So let's compare it to the other side. Love dog games? Then boy, do we have a treat for you. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a cringe pun thing happening here, but it's not too bad. We're staying in the safe zone. Melbourne indie studio Dogs Are Us, much more condensed than the other side announces their new title, Dogs Are Good, a fantastical dog care sim where players can pet, feed, and train their fluffy companions. Great. Even if people read that first sentence, they know the most important information. Coming to PC and Nintendo Switch late 2021. Good, we've got when. That's great. Dogs Are Good is sure to have both animal lovers and sim game lovers drooling over its cute, colorful art, winning writing style, and warm, tender befriend mechanics. So we have used a little bit of wordplay here, which I generally advocate against, but not too bad. Um, not enough to invoke serious cringe. We've described the art as cute and colourful. We expect that the writing will be compelling and fun because we use the word winning. We know exactly what we can do in this game. We know that it has heartwarming gameplay. Um, we know when it's coming out, obviously very important, and which platforms it's coming to. We've covered everything while still keeping it fun and easy to read even if it is a little bit lengthy. I mean, imagine it's spread out across an entire thing. It's not, it's, not too, it's not too many words. When I talk about bad puns, by the way, I'm talking about this. Something like this. <laughs> um, I'm sure that a bunch of people in the office that day gave each other high fives. I'm, I'm sure they thought that was hilarious. And I'm sure a bunch of people reading it also thought it was hilarious. Um, but I'm equally sure that a bunch of people thought that this was in really bad taste and were put off, like really put off. When we're writing leads, we, we're trying to appeal to a wide range. So try not to put people off with bad cliches or puns that are maybe not in uh, the best of taste. Uh, it's best to stick with stuff that isn't going to cause any drama um, to make sure that you kind of get your best shot at getting your news out there. And like cringy wordplay or bad puns or anything super controversial is, is, a, is a really good way to ensure that you don't look like a professional. Okay, here's a hot off the press example of what the headline, subheadline, and lead looks like in action. I have no affiliation um, or connection to this game or this team. I know zero about it, but it was just the, uh, the most recent press release on a game's website that I check out often. Um, it's crafted really well and it gives you an idea of how this would look in context. Actually, you can see exactly when I wrote this talk by uh, <laughs> it's August the 28th. <laughs> so, we have an interesting subtitle, um, and for those already invested in this game, the news of a new launch trailer would be pretty exciting. Uh, personally, I probably would have added a comma after the word story, just for easier reading, but that's my opinion. Um, it's, you know, it's up for debate. We also have our five W's in that first sentence, so we've got what? A new trailer for the medium. Who? Blue Team. Where? Gamescom, and they're based in Poland. When? Gamescom now, and launch next month. Why? Because of the trailer launch. That's why we're talking about this. 
Um, the lead also gives us extra information about a mysterious new character, the fact that we have story, locations and protagonist in this trailer and that it has a really beautiful score. For your next paragraphs, focus on presenting information to those who are by this point interested. So generally you want to be extrapolating on your lead for the first one. So if you're writing a press release for a game launch, here's where you can go into your unique selling points, your core features and more. Think about this section as being closer to the about section on your Steam page underneath all of the like images um, rather than the blurb up the top. Think of the blurb up the top as your lead. <laughs> like. That's, that's a good comparison. So you also want to use pull quotes. It's a nice idea. You don't have to, but it's dependent on the news that you're conveying. It's, it's nice to have pull quotes. Um, this should probably be from someone in leadership. Um, a mission statement goes a long way, as does a comment about how your news is being received or will be received or, or you know, like how recent events have shifted your game design or d just anything that is a comment on uh, what is interesting and how they feel about the news that's being announced. Um, as I just said, you probably want this to be uh, directors or SLT. You want to limit these to one or two. Uh, the, the goal here is to make writing an article a bit easier for a journalist and to make it seem like they got an interview even if they didn't necessarily. So we're working with a very visual medium. <laughs> So absolutely go ahead and be creative, right? Uh, ensure that you're including images, that you're embedding trailers, and that you've got brightly colored buttons with CTAs if applicable. Press releases can have your own font and header imagery. So like this is completely up to you. You're, you're the boss. Just make sure that you use readable fonts, please. <laughs> um, as you can see with this example from Inno Games that I grabbed, uh, they've got a branded header, which is really beautiful and lovely, that has their logo in it, as well as like you can kind of see an overview of the game. Um, they've got good color choices in the links that match the branding as well, and they've got lots of images that continue down um, for quite some way. Okay, so we're going back to our Blueber Team example. Um, here is an example of the paragraph right after the lead. So they've cleverly put the trailer, the link to the trailer, directly below their lead and it's embedded so you just have to click it, you don't have to copy paste or, or click out of the press release or anything, it's all there. This is also the correct placement for a trailer in a gameplay trailer announcement. <laughs> um, and then they've now gone on to describe a little bit more about the game uh, in the subsequent paragraph. This is the sort of more elaborate detail that we're looking for. We have got info about their successful global launch and we've got some information about hardware too. The next paragraph that they have tells us a bit more about the game and how you play it. So we've got strong evocative language here to describe the game. We've got words like explore, uncover, dark mystery, disturbing secrets, like this all paints lots of pictures in our head as well as really blunt technical language that immediately tells the reader what we're getting. Third person, yep, I know what that is. Um, psychological horror, yeah, I know what that genre is, I'm familiar. Um, game. <laughs> we also have information that the players will want to know, which is really important to include, even if it is a little bit bland. So, you know, where can I get it? What's the price? Where can I get a discount? And so a nice tidbit about what we get if we are pre-ordering the game. So we're going to get a digital original soundtrack and the art of the medium digital art book. So that's nice. Um, and there's a 10% discount. Neat. This information you would not put up near the top. You're having it down the bottom because we know that by the time people get to here, they're already very invested in this game. They're very invested in this news. This is the kind of information that people who are already sold want. Okay, um, let's talk about last links and boilerplates. So it may seem like a no-brainer, but you want to include a brief about for both your game and your company at the end of your press release. So you hyperlink as much as possible here. Uh, if you're looking for information on how to assemble your elevator pitches and more, which you will need to have created before you write your press release, or you can do them simultaneously, I don't care, I'm not your mum, as long as they go out at the same time. Um, I highly recommend checking out Meredith Hall's article about brand books on Medium. Um, the link for Mary's article was too long, but I recommend searching her username on Medium or Twitter and finding this article. It's extensive and it's very good. 
for your company, you'll need a more business-like structure. Um, so you'll need a sentence or two, which is known as a boilerplate. As an example, uh, you could use Cat Games Limited is an award-winning nice, uh, game studio based in Mars space. With a slogan of cats are better than dogs, Cat Games Limited strives to advocate for this often misunderstood creature. So usually in this section, you'll mention where you're from, your mission statement, um, any past successes for your studio, any awards, etc., um, and any other games that you've worked on. But, you know, keep it pretty condensed. You'll also want to have a specified PR contact. Make this really clear. This, e this email address should be the most clear thing once you reach the bottom. Um, you don't want people clicking through lots of social media links and contacting you through there. You want it to be really easy for them to contact a, a human who will email them back. You want to have really clear links showing where you can find more info. So make sure that you include a press kit link as well as links to Steam, Discord, Itch, socials, website, newsletter sign up, press sign up, all that kind of stuff. If you're not sure where to start on a press kit, that's okay. Um, Rami Ismail has you covered. You can check out dopresskit.com and put together a press kit based on the structure that they already have. It's, it's pretty comprehensive and I'd highly recommend it if you're struggling. Um, if you're not too sure about using that one, you can just go around and, and check out other press kits on other game websites. Like, There's no 100% correct way to do this as long as you have all of the information available. So going back to our one example, I've omitted the third party company um, boilerplates for this as they were really extensive and actually not how I would recommend doing it, so I didn't want to include it. But I've included Bloober Team's key details here. So we have details about the game. So we've got the engine, we've got the rating. This is really, really important. Um, always try and include the rating. Um, when it's available, what price, where you can buy it. We have all the necessary social links. So we've got their website, we've got Twitter, we've got Facebook and Instagram. We've got the about bloober. So we've got the, and we've got the PR contacts on the side, super clear who the uh, contact is for, for us if we want to reach out and, and score an interview. We actually don't have a direct link to the press kit, but if you click on the game's website, it shows an entire media section that has a dedicated press kit with all the necessary screenshots. So, so they're covered and it works. So what next? You've written a beautifully crafted press release, um, you've got your press kit and you've got all your information ready, how do you get the word out? How do you contact people? How do I get people to read what I'm writing? I still think that PR companies are a really good option for, for this stage. However, there's still a couple of reasons that you might want to do this yourself. Maybe you have the email addresses that you need. Maybe you've got a really like defined idea of who you want to cover this news and you know how to contact them. Great, good for you. Um, and maybe you don't have the funds to hire a PR agency for a couple of months. Also, totally fair. Uh, whatever the reason, here's a few things about outreach and how to get your game or news covered. So your first step is to do your research. I know that sounds really obvious, but hear me out. I mean very specific research. So you are going to find out which journalists and streamers are active in the communities that your game fits into. Who covers the latest horror games for a specific console, the one that you're launching on? Who's playing this type of survival game that is like has some similar mechanics to yours? Um, who's going after the specific genre? When you're doing this, you want to pay attention to the news regarding these people as well. Like as you compile your list, keep an eye on how they're being received by the wider public. You do not want to be caught in a streamer who just dropped a slur in a live stream <laughs> or was involved in some kind of scam. You want to pick out people who match your game's audience and tone as well. So try and find a good balance. The other thing that I want to note here that many of you probably already know is that bigger is not always better. Larger streamers often have a, a cult of personality. People aren't watching for the games. They're watching for the streamer. They're watching because they like that stream in particular, not because they give any particular crap about the kind of games that they're making. Sorry that they're playing smaller or um, micro, I'm, it's hilarious to me that they're called micro, micro streamers that serve a really niche audience, so preferably fans of a specific genre that matches yours, are actually way more likely to convert into better sales because people watch them more for the games that they play rather than their personality. Once you've found these people, I want you to engage with them. I want you to watch their streams. I want you to read their articles. 
this is um sorry this is streamers and journalists so watch their streams read their articles follow them and respond to them on twitter figure out what time zones they work in take notes so you can approach them during their work hours only when i say interact with them online i don't mean respond to every single post they make with like haha so true or you look great i mean engage with the content that they're making that matches what you're doing engage with what makes sense for your game so chances are you've got a lot in common with them anyway if you're already working in the same kind of like niche section of the same industry so use that to your advantage make a friend we also want you to tailor your strategy so i i don't want you to use the scattergun approach scattergun approach literally means a campaign that's targeted at no particular person your game has a particular niche your game is targeted at a specific audience um, and therefore you have a particular niche of influencers and journalists too. So this is why I recommend you resist the urge to send your press release to, like, as is, to every journal or streamer in your contact list for your first push. You want to think about your initial outreach as if you were sending a CV. Like if you were sending a CV to a job, you'd write an accompanying cover letter, you'd explain why you're excited to see the role show up, why you were interested in the company, and I want you to take this approach when you're approaching um, streamers and uh, journalists, media in general. So for your first push, you want to send a personable email um, with an attached embargoed press release. Um, your email should include like a brief reason that you thought that you, that you think that this game is something that they would like so I saw you were talking about X game on Twitter and I think you'd really like the game that our studio was working on it has similar elements and similar themes I think you'd really enjoy it like let me know if you want a key you could also stay like if you can't just <laughs> pull out a, a miracle connection like that um, you can also stay pretty business like uh, but mention that you enjoyed reading an article they wrote the other day that you hope that they're well and that you think that you've got something that is of interest to them. Uh, you really want to be personable you don't want to be slimy so try to avoid try to avoid sliminess in general. <laughs> This needs to be like a nice genuine interaction, not something that's forced. You also want to remember that you're bartering with this journalist. So consider what you're offering them. This is not this is not you begging for coverage. This is a two-way street. Like they've got their own metrics that they need to fulfill as well. If you're offering the first chance of coverage, make that really clear. Breaking the news is a fantastic value proposition. So use it. You know, make, like <laughs> explain what you're offering and and why they should take you up on it. And you probably already know this, um, but I mentioned embargo before, so I just want to explain what that is. It's a note at the top of your release, uh, which tells journalists and creators that they cannot post or talk about the content of the press release until a certain time and date. Um, when you write these, please make sure that you include the time zone. <laughs> There's no strict law upholding an embargo. Uh, journalists just treat these very seriously because it's their reputation, so I wouldn't be too anxious. Honestly, I would also just edit the uh, the embargo to be in their time zone just to make it super, super clear for them so that there's no chance for mistakes. But um, that's just a nice to have. You don't need to you don't need to do that. Most people can figure out how every time zone works. Um, so, yeah, if this is a press release for your games launch, uh, ensure that you send this first email between one to two weeks, if not more, before your launch date. You can either include a key uh, or you can ask them to respond to you to receive a key. Uh, it depends how you want that kind of interaction to behave. I generally like to offer a key and then respond when people get back to me so that I know that they're invested and they're interested and not just sending out keys to people who aren't going to play. Um, so yeah, just make sure that there's a way for them to play your game in time, like early in time, so that they can write about it from their perspective. After your embargo is completed and your favorite journalists have had a chance to take you up on the offer or, or pass, because, you know, they, they might pass. It's not the end of the world. Then at this point, you can send your re press release um, to a bunch of different outlets, far and wide as you please. The reason that I don't say go full to everyone that you can ever find an email for is that you still want to kind of stick to your niche of who's interested, right? You don't want to be pestering journalists because you never know when you're going to need to... Uh, message that specific journalist another time for a very different type of game and they'll be annoyed <laughs> that you were the person that like hammered them last time with all these press releases that weren't of interest to them whatsoever so just bear that in mind 
the reason that we also don't do this first, this whole kind of scattergun thing, is because we don't want to ruin that value proposition that we were talking about earlier. Um, someone at PC Gamer might be less inclined, well not might be, will be less inclined to cover your game if they know that a random small outlet has already broken the news. So that's why we keep those cards close to our chest and that's why we really tailor our first approaches. Streamers. So I feel like we have kind of talked about streamers and journalists quite a bit up until this point, but I feel like that last slide was really about contacting journos. So remember that streamers expect emails that are a little bit more informal than journalists. They probably expect more emojis. Um, they might expect more exclamation points. <laughs> um, so in your email, just basic stuff, but ensure that you're using their correct name, mention something current to them. So if I was writing to me, I might say, hi, hope you're doing okay in lockdown over there. You know, we're sympathizing with you over here, like here in the UK about you and New Zealand and your lockdown. You want to make them feel like they're being directly written to, and you should be writing directly to them. You shouldn't be copy pasting a to whom it may concern. Um, you also want to make sure that you're sending game keys to them in advance if you want them to cover your game ahead of launch. Now, I've said five days here. It does widely depend on what your strategy is. So, for instance, if you're planning on having like a two week long. <laughs> see the sun starting to come into my room um if you're planning on having like a two week long uh streamer hype build up everyone's playing the game or if you're doing some early access stuff this could look totally different but in general give them at least a five day heads up to make sure that they actually have time to get around to it because they've got schedules too timing timing is everything and it's it's the most difficult thing i i would say about press it can totally make or break your news and there's very little that you can do about it but there are a few small things we can do so if you're sending out a game launch press release you don't have too much wiggle room around when to send news <laughs> that's it's set your 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 launch date's set um in other instances though you might have a little bit more flexibility while we're talking about timing uh, remember to send content to journalists and streamers in their office hours for journalists, I'd actually go even further and say to try and send it between their Tuesday and Thursday. Monday, they'll be catching up on the weekend and you know how hard it is to get passionate about anything work-related at 4 p.m. on a Friday. The other thing is that I would always also say to try and get it sort of in the first half of the day um, so that it hits their inbox then. Or trying to read something at like 5 p.m. is unlikely and they're probably going to be actioning something from earlier that day. So it's best to uh, make sure that it doesn't get buried into the next day's news and like through all the overnight emails and things that they'll get in their inbox. So yeah, I would say between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. between Tuesday and Thursday. Oh, my voice is already going. I'm not used to talking this much. <laughs> so you also need to pay attention to the trends if you're caught in a news angle. I personally do not like doing this at all. I don't like reading games news all the time, but it can really help. Don't pitch something to someone who has just written about that thing. This seems really obvious, but I also see this mistake getting made a lot. So the worst time to ask a journalist to cover your dog game is after they've just written an article about the 10 best dog games of 2021. A lot of people do this because that's how they realize that the journalist is interested in the kind of stuff that they're making. So they're like, oh, fantastic. I'll reach out to them. They're totally going to cover my dog game because they just covered all these other dog games. Unfortunately, that news beat has passed. You needed to get in before then. So ideally what you will have wanted to be doing is paying attention to the kind of content that this, that this journalist writes anyway. And then keeping them in mind, so like presumably they would be interested in some kind of like tendon befriend mechanic games anyway, right? So you want to like put that in mind and then pitch them your dog game later on. You do not want to be uh, chasing them up after they've already made this content. Um, and I also want you to be on the lookout for adjacent news that makes yours relevant. So this one is also difficult and this is where a PR agency can help out as well because they are always paying attention to the news. So that's their job. Because this one is literally just keeping tabs on what's happening in the gaming industry, keeping tabs on the news. And that's not always fun. That's sometimes quite depressing. So 
one thing to think of is like how can your news or your product or your angle make some kind of comment in the current landscape of gaming like if, if there's any other news that's coming out like how does it relate to you and your product it's a tricky one to do well if you think that your game is making like a good comment about the current landscape that's a really good time to reach out to a journalist and be like hey I think I've got something here so the example that I've used here is like if toxic communities and MOBAs are trending and everyone's writing about it and the kind of the vibe is like game multiplayer is doom and gloom or you know why are people so toxic in gaming it might be a really good time to push to a journalist um, your soft, uh, wholesome social multiplayer game like as an antidote, right, to, to combat this narrative. So yeah, finding stuff like that, it is trickier, it does take practice, um, but it's good to keep an eye out for anyway. So let's recap because I am running out of time. You're going to research who you want to cover your game. Streamers and journalists, I want you to find the people who really care about the stuff that you're making. You're going to decide which of your news beats is worthy of a press release. You don't want to overwhelm people with news all the time and dilute these moments, but you also want to ensure that you have a long tail on all of your coverage. You're also going to build a really solid, high quality press kit. Even if you don't use Rami's tools, you can look at press kits on Game Titles websites and you can get an idea of what to include. So generally, info about a company, info about a game, logos, Hero images, box art, GIFs, that kind of stuff. And you're going to absolutely smash that press release by writing with emotion, using your five W's, crafting an excellent lead, and using online tools such as CoSchedule or Presley to help you. More about Presley later, but it's where you can find a lot of examples on games related press releases that have already been made. It's just it's just a nice resource to, to be able to see what you should be writing like. And you're going to tailor your outreach carefully and you're going to handcraft emails to the content creators and journalists who really matter to you. You are then later going to target a wider but still pretty niche audience that care about what you're making. Resources. So take a screenshot. <laughs> I do have more tools that I recommend but it didn't quite fit in with the spirit of this talk. Um, we're talking like our MailChimps etc. So please reach out to me if you'd like to hear more. I have super limited time. And thank you so much. My DMs are open. Please only send me nice things. I want to discuss any questions you have. So feel free to, to reach out or just ask me publicly on Twitter. Happy to help. Um, and yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed this. And I hope that you found this helpful. Um, and I can't wait to see people in person soon, hopefully. All my fingers are crossed. Bye.